Hey everyone, welcome to the next part of building a house. This is building for beginners, or if you've been playing The Sims 4 for a while and you just wanna build your confidence with building houses, hopefully this will do just that. If you guys haven't watched the first part of this series, I recommend you do. I'll link in the description down below, um, which is where we learn the basic controls and how to build a house from scratch with a roof, windows, doors, all of that. Today we're gonna to learn how to create a good flowing floor plan with the essential items your sims will need to have successful gameplay so let's jump into it oh and subscribe if you haven't already because i'll have more tutorials coming so this is the house we built in the last part it's a really simple shape it's quite small um, and it's just a one bedroom so you can see in here just to refresh your memory this is one long room where we'll have lounge room kitchen dining and then we also have our bedroom and bathroom over here to begin with, I'm just going to get out the essential items that you will need for your Sims to live in this home. So first up, we will need a mailbox. I find it's easiest to just type mail in the search bar down here to the left and click on the top area where it says text search for mail. Uh, and you'll see all the mailboxes. Your Sims will need a mailbox to receive their bills, um, amongst other things like gifts and all of that. Um, people do send them gifts on their birthdays. I think it would actually look better just next to the path here. So I'm just going to click on the objects to move them. So we've got that. If you go to objects by room just down here, you can easily get to the different room genres in your home. So kitchen's pretty important. Your sim's going to need to eat. Uh, so just to explain to you guys, the essentials in a kitchen will be a fridge, one counter to work on to cook their meals, and some kind of cooking device is usually an essential. They can get by just from cereal or small meals from the fridge, but it won't keep them as happy. I'd also recommend an oven and stove. Some of them are built in one, some of them are separates. Uh, they need to deal with waste. So you'll need to have an indoor bin ideally and an outdoor bin. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and just pop that there. Also to rotate objects as you place them, you click and pull your mouse to rotate. Or if that's difficult for you, you can use the comma and full stop key to rotate the items. Um, so bin was just from the kitchen area where there's a little picture of a trash can. So these are the essentials for a kitchen. I'd also recommend getting a fire alarm, which you can put on a wall. So those are the kitchen essentials. The bathroom essentials will be a toilet, a basin for them to wash their hands. They could wash their hands in the kitchen sink if you are really saving money. Uh, and then they'll need either a shower or a bath. So that's your bathroom basics. Uh, then a space to sleep, um, which you can go to the bedroom category and pick a single or a double bed or even a bunk bed. It is helpful to also have a mirror somewhere in the house for them to uh, increase confidence or charisma skill. Uh, to change their appearance, a mirror is handy. You can also change their appearance via a wardrobe if you want to dress them in different clothes. So that's also a good thing to have, although not essential. And then last of all, good to have some kind of fun object or skill building object. Uh, so I would recommend a bookshelf, which you can find in the study where they can grab a book and have fun reading that. Or you might wanna go for a TV, which is more expensive from the lounge area. There's wall mounted TVs or TVs you can put on surfaces. Um, so those are really the core items that, that you need. If you're having kids, uh, you may like to get some toys for kids to have fun with because they can't read yet. If they're a toddler, for a child they can. And do keep in mind that toddlers will need a different kind of bed, which is a toddler bed. Children, teens, adults, and elders, they can all use the same bed. All right, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Let's go into uh, putting these essential objects into our house. Now, a lot of people would probably like to put the wallpaper in, the flooring in before they put their furniture in. Um, but I actually think it's better to put in your core furniture first so then you know if you need to create more space um, or change your floor plan. So let's go to objects by room again uh, to the kitchen panel. And we'll start off by putting in a fridge because that's pretty essential, I'd say. <laughs> So I'm gonna get this fridge. If you hover your mouse over certain items, you will also see in bold writing any perks of the item. So for example, a more expensive fridge will have a higher food quality 
It might save some power with the eco lifestyle expansion. They may be more reliable. They won't break as much. Uh, whereas a cheaper fridge, the reliability is three, which is not great. You're more likely to have a kitchen fire. <laughs> I've just got a mid-range fridge. Depends if you're on a budget. Uh, then let's get a counter because we do need some counter space for our Sims. Otherwise, they won't be able to cook. So let's grab um, a Dream Home Decorator counter. You'll also notice on the left here, there is a cogwheel icon. And this opens and closes some extra options for your counters. Basically, you can have different kitchen orientations. So there's corner counters, end counters. Um, I'm going to use a basic one over here. I'm going to put a couple down. Uh, and then we also have kitchen islands. The difference with islands is that your Sims can actually sit at them and eat from a stool. So if there's not room for a dining table or you're a little bit strapped for cash, this can also be a good option. Um, usually they have matching colorways to the counters too. And similarly, they also have the cogwheel options where you can have different orientations. So I'll place one counter here. I'm going to select the left end of the counter. This is a left piece and a right piece on the other side. Now, if we look at this kitchen that I put in, this is an example of why it's good to do the refinement of your home after you put in your core essential furniture, because right here, there's not all that much space for a Sim to walk by. I don't know. I feel like it is maybe a bit risky because a Sim might get stuck here. Uh, another good way is to turn your grid on using the G key. Uh, and general rule of thumb, I would leave one tile space around objects to know that your Sims can get through. Uh, so I can just ship these to the side. We have one tile space here, so I know they're going to be able to get fully around. There's some bar stools here. So we can pick some bar stools that if you just hover near the bench, they should clip in nicely, just like that. And if you found you've put your benches in, or your island counters, I should say, in the wrong way, uh, they won't actually clip to the other side. So if I have a chair, you can see that, oh no, it's not clipping to that side, but it'll clip to the other side. So just click hold and turn around. Your chairs will also spin with it. I'm actually thinking that it would make more sense to have another kitchen counter here. So I actually want to move my doorway across. Obviously, these planters are going to have to be moved as well. You can make use of the eyedropper tool, which is up here, or you can use E on your keyboard to copy and paste it. Or I can use my sledgehammer tool to delete what I've already placed and just fix it up again. So now I'll use my eyedropper tool again to copy and paste this counter. And that's looking much better. Now we need something to cook with. So we'll need either a stove or a microwave. I think I'll go a stove an oven. I think I will put it in the middle. So let's delete that piece and place this one in. And then what might be nice is having some kitchen cabinets. So I'm going to go to cabinets over here. It's quite similar to counters in that you can also have the cogwheel options. Um, so I can put a smaller piece above the fridge, I have a regular piece here, maybe another smaller piece above the stove. And I might do a right end piece at the end here because it just makes it look a little different. We are missing a trash can. So I'm going to get a little trash can. Sometimes these are a little hard to put in a spot that isn't in the way, partly because they stick so far out from the wall. It should really be up against the wall. Now, a little trick you can use is while you have an item selected, you can hold Alt down. And it just means it won't snap to the grid. So if I put the grid on, you'll see that it kind of snaps to it. When I have Alt, I can go anywhere I like. And this is particularly handy with bins that you don't want to be sitting in the middle. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to put mine here. I'm going to hold Alt so it can go right up against the wall. And your Sims will still be able to use that. Last of all, we'll just need a kitchen sink. Some of them are freestanding. I personally think this is more appropriate for a bathroom, but you know, sometimes creativity, it can be pretty cool to have this in a kitchen. Um, but I'm just gonna have one that builds into a counter. Depending on where I place it, it will face either way. I want it to face inwards. Um, I might change that to black. So there you go, there's our kitchen. Now lighting is here on the side and I'm actually okay for wall lights. I don't actually want wall lights here. So what I might find is easier is going to this other furniture option, which is searching objects by function instead of room. And then I can just go to this list and find lighting that way. 
um, so it's not specific to kitchens. Um, so then maybe we can pick some nice pendant lights to have over our bench tops. I'll put one here, one here. Might move that into the middle. Just be careful because some of them are pretty long. Like this looks a little bit long to me. That's okay. We can get our sledgehammer and delete those. I just press K on the keyboard. Uh, and luckily this one comes in a shorter height so I can use these instead. There you go, pretty nice. Now we don't have to have a dining area because we already have these bench chairs and Sims can also eat sitting on a couch or on the edge of their bed. But just to keep it looking nice, I might go to a dining room and get a little table. You can get four seater, um, six seater or eight seater. I might just get this last one, which is one of my favorites. Uh, it's similar to the chairs clipping into these counters. Chairs will clip to the dining table so they're spaced correctly. So you know you can get those in. You can also place them on either end as well. Uh, and keep in mind that there's enough space for your Sims to get around the whole table. So I'm just gonna give them that one tile width room, one tile in there. So that should be fine. We could give them a little bit more space to be sure. Now here's a good example of when you probably haven't left enough space. Or at least I hadn't left enough space for a lounge room. I mean, we could squeeze it in, but I don't think it's ideal. So there's no need to panic because all you have to do is click your room and we actually have space towards the front of the lot to drag this out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna drag that down and go up a level because my roof will not drag with it. The levels work by themselves. So you'll need to correct the upper level. And this will give us a lot more room to work with for our lounge space. Let's go to our room search to the lounge. And I think a TV would be good. There's a nice TV cabinet here from Tiny Living. Uh, there's also wall mounted TVs. So you can put a wall TV up if you want. Uh, you can also use these TV stands on the ground and then put a TV on top. That's another option as well. I'm just gonna put this uh, TV in one here. It's a good use of space. I actually think this may work as a bookshelf as well, uh, which is good because my Sims can read from it. If you did want a bookshelf, you can always go to the study and grab one from there. There's also options to get little clusters of books that can be put onto surfaces and your Sims will also be able to read from these little clusters. So I'll put one up there just in case. Let's get a couch for them to sit on. Not much fun watching TV while standing. Not very comfortable. The couches can come in two or three seaters and there's also the addition of modular sofas which work kind of like the counters in that they have the cogwheel as well and you know you can put them in any orientation that you like. To keep things simple I'll just get a regular couch. I'll get this one from Tiny Living then put an armchair in maybe one on the other side and it does look like there should be a coffee table there so let's have a look at coffee tables. Get this little one. All right, that's all we'll put in this room for now. I think uh, we will add our decoration, our plants, our color when we get up to the decorating stage. Um, but let's just focus on now the essential items in the bedroom. So go to your bedroom tab over here, click on the bed. We'll put a nice big double bed in here. Um, pick anyone you like and just make sure to have a tile on either side of the bed if you want to use bedside tables. Again, not essential. Um, but they will make the room look really nice. And also you can put lamps on them. I'm also going to put a dresser in. I think that's pretty essential if you wanna change the outfits of your sim. So I might put one here and think about changing, think about changing the window placement. I might just move a few things around. I mean, I think that still looks pretty decent. And then I can put a mirror next to this dresser as well. Some of them are wall mounted, so you'll just put them on your wall. Or some of them you can just place on the floor like this one. Uh, it can be nice to put them on a slight angle with the Alt key, um, but just keep in mind that that may make it more difficult for your Sim to get to. So I'm gonna go safe with one on the wall. Last of all, we just need to put some things into our bathroom. So go to your bathroom tab. You will definitely need a toilet or else your Sim will become very distressed when they keep wetting themselves. <laughs> There is such a thing as a natural toilet, which is just a bush you can put outside. I mean, you can put it inside if you really want, um, but it's not as pleasant for them to use. Uh, a basin's a good idea, although they can use the sink in the kitchen. Let's put one of those in. And then you will need either a bath or a shower or a hybrid, which has both. 
in here. Uh, showers attach to the wall sometimes, um, and then other times they're a whole object. You've just got to make sure that the sim can get into the shower. So where this arrow is pointing outwards, that's where they step out of the shower. Um, so I could either have it going this way or I could actually turn it this way, which is probably better because it's not going into the door frame. And then we can also put a mirror in the bathroom too. I mean, you can put mirrors anywhere, obviously, but I feel like a bathroom does make sense. I might just move this out of the way there. Actually, I might put that a little bit lower down. Actually, no, privacy a bit higher up. So there you go. Those are basically the essentials all in there. I mean, once you have all of these items in, you can see where some extra windows can go in, where space hasn't been taken up. Um, you might like to put in some skill building items. The easiest way to get to skill building, I think, is actually by function and go to activities and skills, and you can see them all here. The infinity symbol means that you can just see everything. Um, but for example, if I had a sim who was creative, I might like to get them a paint easel for them to use. Uh, and if sims enjoy painting, that'll increase their fun. So it'll also act as something to lift their fun. Uh, you could get a music station. I mean, it depends on which packs you have. A guitar is in base game. Another option is having an office. Offices are expensive. And what I mean by an office is having a desk and a computer. Um, so if you're low on funds, you might have to wait to save up for a laptop or a computer. They start out at 800 simoleons. Simoleons is the currency in the game. Computers can be seen as an essential object because there's so much you can do on them. You can also order things, play games, work on skills, all of that. Um, so if you can afford them, it is a good idea. But usually from starter funds, they're a bit tricky to afford. Now, having a look at this space, I think I'm happy with all the furniture. I might just change up the windows to be a bit more generous here now that I have the room to. So I might put three massive windows here. OK, maybe that was a bit much. And you'll also see in most of the rooms, there's usually a curtain option. Unfortunately, the curtains aren't moldable to the windows. Like you can't change the shape or size of them very easily. You can use the open bracket key to size things up, but they do look a little strange. You can also use the bracket key to size down. Occasionally this does work quite well. You can be quite creative with it, but often you will find uh, curtains don't fit the windows that well. Um, so it's really up to you if you want to use them. I tend to keep them just in the bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, so the other thing is they can be really, really tricky to actually place. You can see there as having a bit of trouble. One way to get around this is to just have one window as opposed to two windows in one spot. Um, and then that way I can easily put a curtain on there. These ones are from my first pet stuff. I'll put it over there. But you don't need them. It won't affect your Sims having curtains or not. Okay, now we've got our furniture in. I think it's a good idea to put some flooring and wallpaper in because it does look a little a little strange, a little half finished. <laughs> so we'll go back to our build mode and we can click here on the floor patterns. There's different genres, wood, stone, carpet, etc. Uh, we might just go a wood in here. Maybe this one from Cats and Dogs. You can hold down shift if you want to cover the whole room. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to click and drag it. And in the bedroom, we could go carpet. Might go a nice gray carpet in here. In the bathroom, I might like to pick something that's tiles. So we could go some sage tiles in here. If you want to change the direction of the tiles, you can use the full stop or comma key to rotate them. You can get really creative with this as well by alternating them if you like. And then you'll also see in your wallpapers, sometimes there are matching tile wallpapers if that's your thing. Um, so I can hold down shift and change those. I'm going to go to paint for the rest of the house. I quite like this plain paint down here in the gray. Again, I can click and drag or I can hold down shift to fill the whole room. Another option is to hold down alt and it will do an entire wall. Um, but shift is pretty easy in places like the kitchen. It can be nice to have some kind of decorative wallpaper to go behind the stove to kind of look like a splashback. Uh, you could use brick for this matching the bricks. 
is also quite kind of nice on the interior. Um, or you might want to go just tiles. There's a nice subway tile in base game, just like that. Um, so yeah, have a play around with that or even stopping it halfway. And one of my personal favorite things to do in the bedroom is to have a feature wall behind the bed head. Um, so there's a lot of nice wooden feature walls. Uh, my personal favorite from Cats and Dogs expansion. Actually, I think it's in siding category. Here we go. It looks brown and icky, but there's a white swatch. And I think that looks really nice as my feature walls. I even put it in here. So there we go. Let me know what you guys think of uh, this part of the build. Um, you can start going into extra decorating, like maybe some lamps on the side of the bed. Just search for it. You know how to do that now. You can get creative with Miss matching them, put some paintings on the wall. Uh, you might have spotted rugs in some of the rooms. You know, you can put some rugs down. You can rotate them for different sizes. But I'm gonna finish this part right here. And in the next part, we will learn how to actually make a really nice color palette and some more furnishing tips for you guys. Uh, but thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Ta-ta!